and welcome to today's segment of The Power of Money. I'm your host, Michelle Graves, affectionately known throughout the United States for the last 30 years. Mm, yeah, I am officially a senior. <laughs> Dealing with money issues with the goal in mind, as you know, as my viewers, of educating and empowering you and your family so that you can begin to make sound financial decisions. In America, sadly, how does one get access to information? It's tough, unless you're wealthy and you have a, a, a crew of advisors with varying opinions, but the average working person, including you middle class persons, know it's tough to get objective information. So I have enjoyed tremendous support over the years and I thank you from the bottom of my heart for your continued support and listenership and viewership. Today is no exception. I've got a panel of experts today, uh, realtors. Uh, yeah, those are the networking kings and queens of America. They know everybody because America runs on real estate. That's an asset. And so today I've got three people that are joining me on set. Uh, two of them are specialists through uh, designation, SRES, senior um, Senior, make sure I get that designation right. SRES, I'll have them speak on that. And another is just a senior who's been involved for a long, long time in working with other seniors and the population at large. Why is this so important? Because who you choose and pick to handle your listings and who you choose to retain to help you to find that perfect home is critical today. And like I said, over the years is not who you know is what you know. So without a lot of further ado and conversation, I'm gonna introduce my guests uh, who will be a part of my world and yours for the next hour. I have to my very close right, uh, Art Reed, cameras if you'll get him, yes. Art Reed is known um, as the godfather of real estate and with good reason he brings over how many years? <coughs> 30. 40, 45 years. 45 years. And I know I was only four years old when I got in the business. <laughs> well, it, it sounds like that, Art. Okay. It really does. 45 years and is an SRES and one of the early, I early. Was designee number 97. My goodness, that's impressive. <laughs> we have directly across from me Jeff Cook. Mm -hmm who uh, in this group is probably the youngest member, and he is also probably. an SRES, <laughs> and he has chosen to focus mm -hmm. on that emerging market. And to his left is Gloria Cook, his mother, and she has been involved. How long have you been involved in real estate? Since 1986. My gosh, long, long time. Not as long as art, but close. a long time. A long time. <laughs> you didn't have to say that. <laughs> <Sorry>. <laughs> So we are going to be opening up by just giving, I want each of you to feel comfortable chiming in sure. and, and just having a conversation about this whole area of real estate. What made you, known as the godfather of real estate, get into this industry to begin with? Well, I never planned on being in the business that long. It was the easiest thing to do. Hmm. My dad was a real estate broker in Tempe, Arizona. My goodness. So I grew up in the business. I've been around it since 1959. Mm. And my first job in real estate was cleaning his office. Cleaning your dad's office. And I office. saw the big bucks that we oh, can make. Oh, God. <laughs> You're being funny. <laughs> what about you, Gloria? Because you bring time in as well. Well, I was uh, trained as an art teacher and was waiting for a, a, a position to open up. And, <clears throat> excuse me. And uh, I, I grew up with houses. My father was a custom home builder, and my brother's an architect and a home builder. And we would be on family vacations, and we would be in a totally different state, and we would be going through model homes instead mm. of going through something historical. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, so Jeff ended up, uh, when I was first in the business, helping deliver 150 pumpkins one year. So so he has really, he's rooted in this. We were the only kids well. in the neighborhood that didn't like Halloween. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's talk about your journey. Having come out of a 
yep. tradition of your mother and her family. Yep. Uh, like she said, we were helping her out when she first start, uh, got started. And uh, I knew a lot about the business, but I had, uh, I had moved around quite a bit after college and uh, settled in Florida where mm -hmm. I did uh, for financing mortgages for 10 oh, yeah, years. I nice. uh, worked with a lot of seniors down there, uh -huh. being Florida, Florida. Mm -hmm. uh, and all the retirees. Um, and I moved back to, I grew up in Cincinnati, however, I moved back uh, about four years ago. Okay. Uh, my father had gotten ill and passed. Okay. So okay. moved back and uh, got mom's, some of her, you know, lingering fares in order and I was like, all right, well, I'm in Cincinnati now, and I know mortgages, and she was, you know, she's like, I still have a nice clientele group, and we decided to work together. So oh, that's so beautiful, yeah, though. Yeah. That, that's what family really so, is about, you know that. Yeah, and she, she has the experience, and I can bring the technology mm -hmm. side of things that I'm used to working with, and uh, it's really been a good, good mix. Well, let me ask the open question, and that is that what makes this growing demographic, baby boomers and older Americans, so different from other groups? Feel free to chime in. Well, when I first started in the business, I had a lot of young people who, who were uh, happy to buy a house that needed some renovation and were ready to get sweat equity into it. Mm -hmm. And uh, I have seen that change over the years because young couples are both both working, they don't have the time for that. They want the, the perfect house, or almost mm -hmm. perfect house now. Okay. Uh, what I have seen as, as the demographic has changed is um, I'll go into a listing appointment and uh, maybe a younger realtor will have been there and said, oh, you need to change the carpet, you need to do this, you need to do that. Now, I'm all for staging mm -hmm. and uh, because people buy what they see, but um, I hate to see people invest ten, fifteen, mm twenty -hmm. thousand dollars into putting a new kitchen in for somebody. Mm -hmm. Make it the best you can, and uh, so by decluttering and and getting things in order, and um, I'm good with good with colors and and decorating, and so I, we can do a lot to help mm -hmm. people get their house ready and on the market without spending a lot of dollars. Is that something you encounter with seniors? Because many times they haven't changed appliances. Yes. And uh, haven't done uh, the upgrading mm -hmm. that is necessary to make a house appealing. Oh, I've seen uh, some carpeting and some refrigerators that are avocado green that mm -hmm. uh, are in absolutely perfect condition. I bet they are. Yeah. And uh, my solution has been to have them electrostatically painted. Excellent. Mm -hmm. um, Excellent. Carpet, carpet you can't do anything about. No, but, you can't. But you would be surprised how many of these older houses have beautiful hardwood underneath mm -hmm. that can be pulled up and right. roughed. Right. One of the early tricks she taught me when we was to pull up a little corner. Okay. <laughs> right. Oh, there is hardwood. Yeah, yeah. All right. right. What are your thoughts, Art? Well, the, the baby boomers are, we have about 78 million of us. Oh, I know. 78 million. And the boomers were born between 1946 and 1964. Mm -hmm. And uh, what we did as boomers, we did just opposite what our parents wanted us to do. We're the rebellious bunch. Mm -hmm. And we weren't the savers. We weren't all the, and, and in fact, we refined the art of using credit cards and refinancing and things like that. and. Being a boomer, one of the oldest boomers, mm -hmm. um, I can relate to that. And what we're starting to see, even though a lot of us boomers are in denial, oh yeah, we're getting older. Yeah, it's okay. real. You know, I'm still 18. So hey, I'm 14. The, the okay. banks are actually seeing now the, the the swing the other way on the credit card debt, as mm -hmm. far as younger right. people don't want anything to do with credit cards now. Exactly. I, I read a really interesting article last week about that. Really? So the pendulum's gone the other way. I guess okay. that's why banks have to figure out other ways to. So what the boomers are looking <laughs> <Student loans. laughs> exactly. what the boomers are looking right now, they're trying to play catch up. But is it they don't too have late? retirement. No, is it, it isn't too okay, late. Okay, it isn't too late. Okay, how do you play catch up? Well, first, 
I recommend, um, can I give a little commercial? Here? I, I, I'm here, we're here. <laughs> I used to teach uh, Financial Peace University. Okay. For Dave Ramsey. Okay. And teaches us how to get out of debt. Well, debt is a killer. Get rid of the, get out of the debt and get out of credit cards and so forth. And uh, that's the first thing we need to change some habit patterns mm -hmm. that we've had in the past and not wanting things instantaneously. Right. Then through that, we can develop good savings habits and so forth. And uh, later on, we could possibly use, because we build up equity in our houses and so forth, possibly use a reverse mortgage for a, for a way of helping us out in, reti in retirement. Mm -hmm. What are your thoughts about that? Absolutely agree. One of the largest problems seniors have is all their money's tied up in their house. Yep. And all yes. the equity's there. And it's great. They don't have a monthly payment, but they have hundreds of thousands of dollars that they can't use. Mm -hmm. uh, going back to your previous que your, your, your last question as far as what's different with boomers, uh, moving in itself is complicated enough. Mm -hmm. When you're a boomer and you're trying to figure out which direction you're going to go, I mean, you've got to worry about what your fixed income is going to be, mm -hmm. your debt, as you previously mentioned, taxes, uh, where you want to live. Mm -hmm. uh, we have a meeting with someone this week, and the reason she's contemplating, she's like, none of my kids live here anymore. Mm -hmm. So she's going to have two of her sons in and talk to the other daughter, and one's in Michigan, one's in Indiana, one's in uh, Nebraska. She wants, she wants to just figure out where she wants to live and which, mm -hmm. which, which child will be there to like really help her out. Yeah. She's lonely as can be. You know? yeah. She has no family here. Yeah. Yeah. If something happens, who's going to help her out? You know? uh, so you have a lot more m moving pieces going uh, when you're making these decisions as a boomer because you've got to look more towards the, uh, the, the future. So. And toward health care. Health care as right. well. Because exactly. the reality yep. is that the body is not a, a machine and you mm -hmm. can't replace parts a lot yep. of time. And going from there, mm -hmm. past family medical history, if something runs mm -hmm. in your family, uh, mm -hmm. you know, and then that, that goes back to the real estate as far as changes you might want to make into your current house if you want to stay there. Right. Uh, taking out the, the bathtub that you're going to need to start into a step-in shower or, uh, you know, first floor masters are right. really no important. Steps. Uh, no steps. No steps. Uh, you know, making those kind of changes. So, yeah. What are your thoughts, Gloria? Well, I have a friend that went through exactly this. Uh, she wasn't a friend when she moved, but she has become a friend. Okay. So she mm -hmm. was a client, and her son, uh, she and uh, her son's family were both, uh, re or the son was relocated to Cincinnati area. Okay. And she wanted to be close enough so that she could be around for the children's activities. Right. And uh, then after three years, he got relocated. Mm. Oh wow! So he was he was relocated to Atlanta, mm -hmm. and she said, "I've lived in Atlanta. I don't want to move back to Atlanta." Mm. She had another son in the New York area, okay. and they they looked at adding on an addition to to the house that he had, and realized that that was going to be quite expensive, mm -hmm. and and she ended up settling uh, in the Chicago area where oh. she, her third son is. Okay, and she got a condo that that was in really mm -hmm. run down, you know, it was a, a, mm -hmm. a very elderly person that had passed away. Okay. And uh, she totally gutted the place. She got it for a very good price, totally gutted it, and is just happy as, as can be. That yeah. is amazing, but that's such a good story. Mm -hmm. Right. Because right. she was at least open to making a change. Right. She wanted to stay here, yeah. but she said, and she's in great shape. Okay. The healthy walks, you know. But she, she said, I just, I just have to be near family. Mm -hmm. I couldn't agree with so, her more. Right. I really And we're agree. seeing a lot now of uh, high-end customers mm -hmm. uh, in the six and seven hundred thousand dollar price range who are downsizing to something in Cincinnati and then buying something else, a condo near their children mm -hmm. or, or a vacation spot. Well, right. that's that's so. an answer. Mm -hmm. that, that's a good answer for people that can afford that. Something. Mm -hmm. Our last two yeah. sales have actually been people that have moved to be closer to their grand grandchildren. Right. Mm -hmm. Moved to this area. Well, one one moved back here from Utah. Okay. Uh, and the other one moved. 
to Atlanta, Georgia area to be, be with their children or their grandchildren. And the boomers are spending more on their grandchildren than any other generation has. Right. Well, I'm a grandmother. So, and I'm <laughs> so you know, right yeah, she I'm knows here. too. I'm, I'm like, oh my God, you know, this is, I'm the pain. But yeah, I mean, people are moving specifically to be near their grandchildren. That is, so, that is wonderful. Yeah. What, what about you? What are you thinking, Art? Well, I've noticed another trend. Um, there's a misconception or a myth that a lot of people will end up in skilled care communities. Other people call them nursing homes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But there's approximately only 5% of the people in the United States. That are nursing homes. Right. Wow. That is powerful. Say, yeah. Let me say that again. Did you hear what Art just said? 5% of people are going into nursing homes. So to my older viewers, why do you keep talking about going into a nursing home? Because that's not what's happening. Now, sometimes they have to mm -hmm. uh, sure. rehab and so yeah. forth. So what has happened, the Home Builders Association has a designation oh. called a Certified Aging in Place Specialist, where they can go into the existing home and retrofit it for as the people get older. Yeah. Because most people want to stay in their own home. Mm -hmm. They surely do. That's where yeah. your memories as are. As long as they yeah. can. As long mm -hmm. as they can. And uh, I think that's very, very important. And, and that's that's one thing we learn as seniors real estate specialists. Yes. How to understand where these people are coming from. Mm -hmm. I had a situation that isn't necessarily that far yet, but I talked to you earlier about mm -hmm. it. Some people ended up getting a reverse mortgage. Yes. Mm -hmm. Uh, the man is 85. Okay. The wife is 75. And they said, well, we want to downsize. We've got a condo uh, right now. We really love it, but we, we need to downsize. And I found out that, well, the first thing, we wanted to do a reverse mortgage or home equity conversion mortgage mm -hmm. for purchase. And as we looked at homes, other condos, ranch homes and so forth like that, we found out that that wasn't the answer. So what we did was, is we sat down and I said, what you need to do, you can stay in your own home and use a reverse mortgage. And we set up a plan for their retirement. What had happened is they had a great retirement in 2000 until 9-11. Oh, yeah. yeah. And then also the crash in 2008. Yeah, with property. Mm -hmm. So, but they kept the same spending habits. Mm -hmm. So we had to send a, sit down and talk to them about that and set up a plan using a reverse mortgage to help them with their retirement. Hmm. Perfect. And they're, they're in their same home. Perfect. Mm -hmm. And that's tapping into the equity that they... Exactly. Yeah, their largest right. investment. They had a free and clear home, two hundred and fifty thousand mm -hmm. dollars. Free and clear mm -hmm. home. And I'm sure, based upon their age and the value of the home, they probably qualify for tax-free. About maybe one hundred and fifty thousand. Yeah. Yeah, that's what I'm right. figuring. Mm -hmm. One hundred fifty thousand. You can do well on that. Right. Well, between that and Social Security and yep. whatever pensions or IRA, I mean, you can, you can make really it. You make it last, you make yes. It. You can make it. Mm -hmm. it is, that is a brilliant uh, recommendation. I just wonder how many people would have backed up and looked at their circumstances and looked at opportunities. That's why, talk about that designation, because um, I didn't get it out right. It's the Seniors Real Estate Specialist designation. Okay. Not Senior Real Estate Specialist. Mean like we're old people. Okay. <laughs> okay. Okay. Be careful, Art. <laughs> no, I, I. I just noticed that I have gray hair. Okay. Uh, and well, anyway, it's been around. I like since being the baby the, here. The latter part of 1997. Okay. And I got involved uh, as an instructor. Well, first as a designee. Okay. Then as an instructor since 1999. My goodness. So you. And you've so I've been all in. over the country okay. teaching it, and seen a lot of transitions okay. happen over the years. And um, the one thing very interesting about it, when I always ask my students why they took the class. Mm -hmm. And it's different than any other class. 
because the people take it because they really care. Well, not that the other people don't care for the people, but primarily they're taking the seniors real estate specialist class because they're dealing with issues themselves, mm -hmm. with their parents or themselves, mm -hmm. and they want to know what to do, and they want to help other people out. That's beautiful. And secondarily, to make money from it. That's very American. So the people who take the seniors real estate specialist class, 99% of them have a passion to work with people. Is you that are, what motivated you as a young exactly person? That's exactly what I, I, because when I first got in the business, we were dealing with a lot of my mother's former clientele. I was just working with a lot of seniors to begin with. Mm -hmm. And a lot of people were downsizing or moving to see their grand, you know, to be with their grandchildren or something. And, it had been mostly who I'd worked with. The people who I ended up bringing in on my own became were usually first time home buyers or mm -hmm. you know, younger people. Um, but uh, when working with them, you get to really realize how much assistance they need. You know, a lot of times uh, they're widow or widower and you know, they need maintenance people. They need, I mean, they need everything. They need guidance uh, for every, you know, and they need people who they can trust. I mean, Important. The, one of the biggest things that we've always done is keep a nice list of contacts as far as a plumber I can call right away, mm -hmm. a landscaper of the, you know, it, you know, how many things go wrong, a gutter guy, a window, you know, mm -hmm. uh, and these, and unless we've used them or have used them with a tremendous amount of great feedback, we don't refer anyone because, uh, you know, we're very protective of, of the people that right. we work with. Mm -hmm. uh, as you, as you know, as, uh, that goes into why we got I got into it is because you know after working with them they're so nice and you know but you're like oh, you can't you're, you're like no I'm gonna protect you you know uh -huh, uh -huh. <laughs> and, and then we check back to make sure yeah. that the that the contractor that that they the used mm -hmm. yep. did a good job mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you know that's so important today because um, I've seen a change in just the mindset of, of so many people that provide services and I still say the best services are going to be garnered through referrals. Mm -hmm. I agree. You, yes. you, you know, and so that's an added benefit yeah. of working with you as a senior specialist yeah. because you would have those networks and those contacts to help them because a widow or a widower even, because a lot of men don't know how to fix stuff right. either. I mean, oh, yeah. God, yeah, it's not personal. They don't yeah. know how to fix anything. But give me a wrench, I'll break something. Give me a wrench, I'll break something. <laughs> Let me remember that. That's a good one. But that that's very, very um, insightful. So your motivation as a younger person was because you kept interfacing with older mm -hmm. clients mm -hmm. uh, versus your younger and That and I have seen instances when I was doing finance in Florida. Mm -hmm. uh, a couple came in that we were doing a refinance for and they were also buying a car. Nope. And the sales guy was, let's put this this way, the financing plan wasn't real nice. No, uh, no. So I helped them mm -hmm. fix that before they Take signed the anything, back. you know. <laughs> uh, and pe You know, investment people trying to get someone into an annuity when mm -hmm, they shouldn't be in an annuity. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You know, I, I just wish, you know, if I wasn't around, you know, she would have some, you know, mm -hmm. someone help Because they don't know. Yeah, a it's lot of people just people don't, don't know. Plus, they've lived in their house for 15 years, so there's a lot of things that they haven't had to, uh, mm -hmm. had to worry about. Mm -hmm. uh, so, yeah. yeah. Well, that's why, as I shared with you in the green room, that's why I do this show. Yeah. Because people don't know. Yep. And uh, if we can give them hope mm -hmm. as well as um, people they can connect with, yeah. then I think that's doing a very good service absolutely you know, it's an honorable service yep. so i had a query yesterday a woman asked me directly she said well what's in this for you mm -hmm. and i said mm -hmm. after 30 years of doing this i can tell you what's in it for me is that it's a joy yeah. it's right. a joy right. and i get deep satisfaction in knowing that people are being helped mm -hmm. and that to me is just very very important today because so many people are just getting just messed over. No, there's a lot they of really are. There's a lot yeah, of I know they're getting. There. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, there's a lot of predators out mm -hmm. there. It really, really is. From so fake texts. 
return scam or uh, IRS yeah, scams. Yeah, to, like, come on, stop it. They're trying everything. Yeah, know? yeah, and it's just so many people out here. So what has been the most satisfying thing you have done with, with all these years behind you, Art? What has been the most satisfying aspect of being a realtor? Well, I look at it a little bit differently than most senior real estate specialists. Okay. Because I teach the course. Okay. And uh, I've helped a lot of seniors out. Okay. Uh, buying and selling houses and so forth, or helping them with reverse mortgages. But the most satisfying thing for me is teaching the other realtors how to do this. Mm -hmm. And what the difference is, then, I mean, most people say, well, what's the difference? in working with people who are older than anybody else. Mm -hmm. That's a good question. And they don't know. And in fact, the first part of the class, we spend a lot of time talking about differences in generations and the how to have empathy for these people, understand what they're going through. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's exciting for me to see the sparkle in their eyes when they catch it. Mm. That's satisfying. And and it is. And mm. I've had the blessing of, of doing, of, I've been told I've taught more seniors real estate specialist class than anybody okay. in the nation. Okay. And uh, well, you're highly regarded. Trained, trained over mm -hmm. thousands of seniors real estate specialists. We now have about 15,000 of us mm. total. And that's so small though compared to the million two realtors that we have. Yeah. Wow. So we still need to get the word out. Mm -hmm. I agree. So, but I agree. it's exciting for me to see people get involved and then they call me, what do we do? And they have this passion and they've turned their whole career around mm -hmm. like I did mm -hmm. to help other people. When I was first approached about the senior, I was training director of a company. Okay. And that was in, in 1999. The relocation people contacted me and said, hey, we, have you ever heard of the seniors real estate specialist designation? I said, I've seen some ads, I know nothing about it. He says, well, we need to check on that mm -hmm. for, our, for our agents. I said, I'll do it. So I called the owner of it in California okay. at that time. It was privately owned. Okay. Now it's owned by the National Association of Realtors. Oh, is it? Yep. Oh my goodness, okay. And yeah. um, the only way to take it, we didn't have online stuff or anything. Mm -hmm. We had a correspondence course. Okay. Paid $399 Ooh. for it. Ouch. <laughs> and I got a book. Okay. <laughs> and then I had to take a test. Well, I spent two days doing that and I really got into it and saw what was I realized what was happening to my mother. Mm -hmm. My dad had passed away in 94. I realized what was happening to my father-in-law. My mother-in-law had passed away in 97. She had Alzheimer's. Mm. And saw the changes that they were going through and I said, this is something that I could, in fact, I changed my whole career because of it. That's powerful. And That's I, powerful. I spent, uh, the bulk of 10 years, the next 10 years, teaching all over the country. My goodness, now you took yours online? Yes. And what was the difference? I mean, I guess you didn't have the benefit of a live instructor. I mean, it was uh, video. Okay, so oh, it was, it was video. Yeah, it okay. was video, and uh, you had to re you know, test requirements. You had to mm -hmm. hit certain test requirements, or you, know, you would have to take it over again. Luckily, I didn't have to do that. But, okay. Um, yeah, I mean, I put the same type of time in. It's, you know, you can't, Flow through it. Think mm -hmm. people think that because you take a course online or something, you can just hit click, 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 uh -huh. and be done. And, and it doesn't allow anything like that. Mm -hmm. right. And it does bring up a lot of different. Like uh, you were talking about communication. Uh, you know, my first time home buyers who are younger, they they want to text everything. Yes. All right. Well, I would never do that with it with a boomer. There. Like, well, what are you, what are you, what are you, you doing? You know, unless they want to do it that way. Okay. Now, if they want to communicate that way, I'll communicate. Mm -hmm. However, exactly. you know, I mean, you, we have the phone, the email, the text. I mean, there's so many different ways. Right. I always go with what they're most comfortable with. Okay. Um, 
I don't like to do all of like texting. I think you lose a certain amount of something. Uh, especially I'm if it's, to hear you say that because yeah. I'm going to tell you, texting is like, well, yeah. it's just like something very quick. Yeah, I think, uh, mm -hmm. I think you're going to lose something, especially if it's an important discussion you got to have mm -hmm. uh, regarding something, uh, maybe part of the transaction or, mm -hmm. or something along those lines. Uh, but yeah, it breaks down the generations and how they prefer to mm -hmm. communicate. And uh, my first thing is uh, I never treat everyone the same, you know, and then right. let them dictate how, how you want to communicate. So. Okay. What about you, Gloria? Do you find uh, that there are significant differences in terms of age spans for the older versus the very old, the elderly, um, which are people over 80? And then you have your seniors, which are people 60 to 80. Mm -hmm. And then you have your young seniors, which are 50 to 60. Do you find, uh, in terms of communication flow, uh, those groups are differing? Or there, there's quite a bit of difference in, in the, the generation span. Mm -hmm. uh, but I'm kind of at a spot where I, I kind of spread myself across that. And when things get too technological, then... Then you talk to your then yeah, Jeff takes I, yeah. I can tell by the way she uses my name. I'm like, oh. He, he says he can tell by the way I walk up to him with my iPhone <laughs> if, if it's going to be a 10 minute problem or a 20 minute problem. Or <laughs> right. And her other, her other line is paper. I need paper. I need to feel it, touch it, see it. You I'm know, with it's you, like, Gloria. <laughs> I'm the same. Because I'll be like, okay. it's right here. Yes, She's like, I need I, paper. Yes. I, I was talking with a friend and I said, I guess I just don't get it. Yeah. Now, it's part of the memory process. I think it is. Mm -hmm. When you write it down, I and, retain and, it. I mean, yes. and, and, and we have that. I'll get an email, and I'll, I'll, so I'll just forward her the email. Well, she wants to see it, you know, sometimes. Mm -hmm. or, mm -hmm. And I know. get it. And I, I mean, it. If, so it's, if it's just a quick note, fine. But, mm -hmm. but if it's maybe an attachment with a schedule or something, she's like, print that out. I need to I see need it. To I need yeah, touch yeah. feel. So, and okay. I think those are significant yeah. in terms of interfacing with, with um, older clients mm -hmm. as well versus your young ones who do all communication with each yes. other in the yeah. same room, mm -hmm. texting. I, I agree. That is so unbelievable. And, and it goes to, uh, you know, the transaction as well. I mean, we have online signatures, mm -hmm. and uh, but some people will, will be fine with it. Some people are like, uh-uh, I want to write. Exactly. <laughs> like, I want to, you know, exactly. okay. And we exactly. can do the paper contract too. You know, yeah. I mean, we'll, we'll, you know, we'll work for, you know, however you want to do things. And, well, I'm sure you already know that this demographic shift, and that's why I have you all on today, um, is the largest in U.S. history. Right. Period. Yes. There, there is cool. nothing quite to um, compare with the large numbers of people that are coming right. out of the workplace, yeah. most permanently, hopefully, uh, for the next 20 years. Yes. And I do believe that there's going to be a major impact, just like there was a major impact when we were younger. Mm -hmm. Hot pants and and everything else, you know, the war in Vietnam and everything. I mean, yeah, yeah, we were all there. Um, <laughs> <laughs> we were. And, um, and I believe it's going to be an impact on this group as well. So are you to educate um, this group of people? Have any of the three of you done seminars, or how how do people learn more about what you bring to the table? I, I do. Uh, okay. When I first took the senior, I, I actually had to take a real seniors real estate specialist class. Okay. I went to Miami, Florida. To, to, I was it was tough, but I had to go to Miami. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so sorry. To see to, I mean, to see I the was, seniors yeah, in yeah, probably in February. Seven, right. yeah. <laughs> In yeah. February. And it was given by the founder of the organization, oh, yeah. oh. which was, so we became great friends. And uh, but what I discovered it, when it, when I left that class, I said, "Who is trying to reach the same people I'm trying to reach? Mm -hmm. Who's not in competition with me?" Right. And that's those were the independent and assisted living communities. Huh. So I developed a database of independent and assisted living communities and contacted all those people and offered them a free downsizing seminar for people thinking of moving into their community. Hmm. I call it the upside of downsizing. The upside of downsizing. 
And how was the response? It was phenomenal. Mm. And uh, the neat thing about it, you see all ages in there. And you'll see the children in there, too, listening. Yeah. Mm. But there would be people in the class, or the, the talk that I gave, who had, who, had, who had been in their home for 40, 50, or 60 oh. years. Ooh, we. Yep. And as we know in the real estate industry, our industry has changed. And uh -huh. when we walk in with a big folder about this thick, yeah, their eyes with all these up. different disclosures, <laughs> they don't understand that. Because when they bought it, it was because that thick. It, well, when I first got in the real estate business, it was done on a handshake. Yeah. Oh, yeah. wow. I'm not that old, though. Oh, oh okay, okay. We okay. have this stuff called <laughs> carbon paper, but some people don't know what that is. Okay. So, so. I know carbon. That I do, I do seminars for people like that, and and uh, it's and if they decide to sell their home through me, fine. If not, that's fine too. But I give them ideas on how to prepare their home to sell, mm -hmm. how to get how to down downsize or get rid of extra. Yep. Treasures? Yeah, yeah, that's, treasures. Yeah, that's one of the biggest treasures. things okay, well, that, what, what was that what wouldn't you agree? That's, I mean, when I talk to people, that's one of the biggest things that they can't wrap their mind around. What am right. I going to do with all my stuff, you know? And, and there are now companies to yeah. work with that, oh, transitional oh, companies. Yeah, There's online I auctions, and yeah. yeah, I mean. Well, I still believe um, that's probably hard. Yeah, yeah. Oh, it's oh, very difficult. Yeah, I think that's probably one of the biggest steps. Uh -huh. We did a presentation last week at a at a retirement community okay. in Kenwood, and uh, at the end, the one man said, "Where do I start?" I mean, it was oh, it gosh. was it was us as realtors. Mm -hmm. It was a financial planner. Okay. Uh, it was an estate planner. Okay. And it was an online uh, auction. Online okay. auction. Okay. 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 And mm -hmm. uh, ABTA, so. um, another service that that takes you all the way through transition mm -hmm. service, okay. transition yeah. service. Mm -hmm. and uh it was informative for us as well but i'm sure uh, to look on many of these faces i mean yeah. they were just bewildered mm -hmm. uh where do you start and and one gentleman asked he said how many of you will be moving in the next two months mm -hmm. and one couple raised their hand and then he said six months and a few more mm -hmm. and uh but you could see, I mean, it was just pressure whether mm -hmm. to raise their hand or not. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's just mm -hmm. such a big, such a big deal. And, and there was a couple in there that had been in their house for 60 years. Yeah. Oh, wow. <laughs> they yeah. did 40, and there were some 40s and 50s, uh -huh. oh and then goodness. one couple, 60 years old, six, I mean, 60, 60 years, years they'd been in the house, mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. Several friends came together, and then, and then there was uh, one, one gal that was there with her mother. Okay. And... Um, so it was uh, it was very informative for us as well as for them. Mm -hmm. So I'm sure. But but it, it is it's a it's a a, a planning. I mean it's right. it's uh, and and educating because like you said when these people bought their houses they might have bought it on a handshake and now with the mountains of, of market analysis materials that we wow. we provide so that we're we're sure we're getting them the top dollar mm -hmm. for their house mm -hmm. and uh and then when they get to closing i mean it's just overwhelming and then it on top is. of that you have to look at the current market which is we're in a 17 year low in inventory mm -hmm. right so i almost i'm to the point now usually people are more worried about selling before they buy you almost need to figure out where you're going to go mm -hmm. before you list the property at least mm -hmm. at least for now mm -hmm. um mm -hmm. Uh, and that uh, people of all generations are, are doing that. Uh, right. now they're they're buying before they they sell. I mean, if they mm -hmm. can financially. Well, it seems um, to me that um, at least from all indications that we're coming to an end to that. Yeah. That right. things are getting ready to shift. Slow back. a little bit. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Yeah, which is probably a good thing because mm -hmm. mm -hmm. we don't want things to repeat. Right. 2008. Right. We don't. What were your thoughts? Well, on that? A, a question I've always mm -hmm. I've been always asked, and you've been asked this too. Um, when is the best time to move? When is the and best, the best time, time, to time to move? Is before you have to. Yeah. Before you have to. 
Yep. What do you mean by that? Well, when you get to the point where you're getting criti critically ill mm -hmm, or, mm -hmm. or even just stumbling around like I do. But I'm not that old. <laughs> you are but anyway. such a cynic. Anyway. <laughs> okay. anyway. Um, <laughs> rather than have that pressure mm -hmm. of having to move like this, you can take your time. So right. it's stressful so, enough. But there's enough. the trauma, like you were saying, 40, 50, 60 years in the house. I, I I remember a lady that I was went over to list the house. Mm -hmm. She was 84 years old. 84. Okay, still living independently. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. Her son was there. He was 55. To help her out. And I was thinking, and this is before I knew how to work with seniors. Okay. And I thought this would be a slam dunk. Get it done. Mm -hmm. Well, I got a contract in three days. Okay. Full price, cash. Easy. Possession 60 days after the close. Did your job. Stuff. Stuff. <laughs> I mean, this is a slam dunk. It took two hours to present it. The reason being, we were sitting in the family room area, okay, or dining room area, right off the family room, and I remember her now, I learned a lot from this, as I was presenting this, she wasn't paying too much attention to me. Mm -hmm. She was looking around the house, uh. having memories, <laughs> and then I also realized her 55-year-old handprints as a child, we're in the sidewalk up front. Mm. Oh. And she's thinking, I'm moving into an assisted living community and I'm gonna die. Mm. Well, it's also been discovered when they move into independent or assisted living communities, their lifespan increases. Mm. So it's a good thing. Right. Okay. When people, when people used to retire at age 62 to 65, mm -hmm. guess how long their lifespan was normally after that? Not long. Three years. Yeah. Because they had nothing to look forward right. to. Mm -hmm. Now we're more active. And people are, my mother lived to be 92 years old. Well, good for her. And she went into assist, independent living, then into assisted living, then into skilled care. Mm -hmm. But she lived a full life, and she was there for 15 years. That is beautiful. That is such a beautiful testimony. And I remember, I remember one time I went out to visit. She was in Arizona. And she moved back. We were driving around, and then... We came back to the community. It was a continuing care right. retirement mm -hmm. community. It has all different levels. Yeah. levels. Mm -hmm. And she says, you know, this is terrific. Wow. I have a peace of mind that I know that I'm going to live here the rest of my life. Well, that is wonderful. Give her the peace of mind. Mm -hmm. What are your thoughts, Gloria, about that? Well, that's a wonderful story. And... Uh, Yes, w when you see people that you know have almost outlived the utilitarian part of their house mm -hmm. because they can't do the steps any longer, mm -mm. Um, you know, we try and, and help them adapt and reverse mm -hmm. mortgage, and, and, uh, but we try and help them adapt the house as much as possible. But sometimes you just can't. So, right. so it is much better to make a move when you're healthy and can mm -hmm. can set down new roots than than when you're when you're in bad shape, and um, it, it's it's far better, far I better. Totally agree. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Particularly those steps, mm -hmm. because I steps. really, 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 as I've grown older. And I've got a bunch of steps where I live, and I detest. Uh -huh. I truly, yeah. when you're younger, you, dum, 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 but when you're older, trying to do steps mm -hmm. is just not pretty. Yep. Mm -hmm. And I think that. Um, well, the other thing, uh, yeah. even if you have a first floor master, then you'll see a house with a 
laundry room in the basement. Right. right. Well, that's the right. worst because well, then you got you got your down. arms full as you're right. going they're, down. They're, you know, go. you want yeah. the laundry room on the yeah. first floor too. Right. I mean, things that a lot of people don't think of until it. <laughs> they, See, they that's bad why ears. I'm saying that I really feel uh, the good thing for your industry uh, is that you have people that are trained, that right. know yeah. these things, because believe me, many, many seniors, including our baby, they don't have a clue. Right. The, the, the denial that we're in will come to an end. Mm -hmm. And when it can be you, something as simple as you know, or getting rid of some throw rugs because... Oh my God, scatter <laughs> They're the worst. Yeah. Oh, yeah. they're the worst, yeah. Oh, yeah the, or if, the if they do have to temporarily use a walker, then the walker's getting caught in. Right, You right. know, it could be just simple, something simple as that. Right. It doesn't have to be remodeling a, a bathroom mm -hmm. into a walk-in shower or something, you know. Although uh, it would be nice. They're great too, yes, you know. it would be nice, uh, it would be nice. Mm -hmm. But you gotta do a little of each. That's yeah, something. Some, yeah, something to consider. Mm -hmm. yeah. and, and again, without um, knowing, they're out here. Yeah. And that's why I think it's so important that you all share your perspective uh, in terms of this, this emerging group. Because I'm telling you, 78 million people is a lot of people. It's a lot of people. Yes. And they are walking out of employment situations with no clue. I don't care how smart they were in corporate America. When you are out here on your own mm -hmm. and those relationships have come to an end because people really don't want you coming back to your job yeah. that they hate, <laughs> you know, looking at you free mm -hmm. um, and trying to, to build a new life, really not adequately equipped to know what I need to do and, and how I need to do it. And like I said, God forbid you get sick or hurt yourself, or run into chronic illness conditions, which is again a part of growing older. Right. Uh, diabetes, high blood pressure, cancer, mm -hmm. prostate, all these things are all a part of aging. We like to think it were not so, but it is so, and now Alzheimer. You know, yeah. you think you've got everything mm -hmm. beat, and, and daggone it, you got Alzheimer. You don't even know whether you're coming or going. Mm -hmm. Those things are, are challenging. Those things are challenging. So give me, in your bucket list, Mr. Reed, what is the first thing a person needs to know if they're getting ready to retire and they have a home? What's the first thing you want to recommend? Well, the first thing I want to, I, I'd recommend that they, they really analyze whether they want to stay exactly where they are. Okay, for the balance of their life. Right. Mm -hmm. Statistics which I didn't believe this, and I actually taught it, but I didn't believe, I believe it. it. <laughs> <laughs> so, I teach stuff I don't believe. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Wasn't my favorite in college either, statistics. <laughs> uh, people were looking for their last home. Mm -hmm. Start looking for the last home around age 60. Okay. And guess when my wife and I bought our, what we think is our last home with no steps, first floor yeah. master, first floor laundry. I was 60. Really? I didn't believe it until I looked at myself. Okay. <laughs> and I'm 70 now. Okay. So at that, so, so and, and if they want to stay there, look at, like we've been talking about, mm -hmm. the aging in place to retrofit things for later on. Mm -hmm. It's also known uh, partially as universal design, it's for all different ages, like levers on doors and mm -hmm. things like that. And uh, look to the future. Right. I had a wake-up call. Mm. You want to tell us that? Are you comfortable? I'm comfortable. Okay, tell us. I'm the standard boomer. I was invincible, mm -hmm. right? Well, six years ago, August, 17th, 2010, I wasn't feeling well and I ended up, my wife took me to the emergency room. And anyway, being the normal man, mm -hmm. I didn't go to the doctor. <laughs> okay. okay. So they found out I was bleeding internally. Mm. 
and being the normal man, I didn't have a colonoscopy when I was supposed to. You're supposed to have one when you're 50. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I waited until I was 64, in fact, that day, the next day. Wow. And they found colon and kidney cancer. Mm -hmm. I'm okay now. I've been through chemotherapy and all this, a lot of different six surgeries in two years. Mm -hmm. I'm okay. I'm in great shape. Well, not this, mm -hmm. but anyway. Uh, but it was a wake up call. I'm sure. And I was in denial before. Because I thought I'd live forever. Mm hmm. So. There you are. It's, it's very important. There you are. I hope people don't do what I did. I hope that they take good care of themselves. And I hope they do the testing and so forth. Well. But I, I hope nobody else has these wake up calls, but they do. Well, I think most people, as morticians can tell you, most people don't expect to be out of here. And therefore, they don't plan as if they have a finite right. ending. And they put things off, and they delay, and they procrastinate. But the reality is that as you get older, if you do not plan, it does not stop the plan from executing. That's right. It's, it's going to keep ticking it's, it's on. It's going to keep ticking mm -hmm. on. Right. So oh, you yeah. need right. to have your clock wound so you're in step. Right. You just got to be prepared. You definitely do. Mm -hmm. And that's what you guys bring to the table mm -hmm. is that sensitivity and awareness. And, and I tell you, Art, you are a miracle because I know far too many people personally that did not make it through what you made it through. I know a lot of people who were not diagnosed at the same time I was. And did. They're no longer yeah, here. Yeah, they're not here. And they're I'm a walking miracle. And I yes, you are. Thank prayers, thousands of people praying for yes. me. Yes, yes, yes. For that. A beautiful, beautiful story. Yeah. And you've lived through your husband's death. Yes, he passed yeah. four years ago. I remember. I remember. Uh, they, they feel it was from Agent Orange from when he was yeah. in Vietnam. Oh, my goodness. Uh, uh, the VA, however, is not, is not forthcoming in, mm -hmm. in any way. Mm -hmm. and, uh, but that's okay. Um, um, and I had a knee replacement yeah. mm -hmm. in February. And I live in a, I moved about 62. Yep. Yeah. I was about to say when he said that. Yeah, that was about the time I you guys. I still don't believe it. <laughs> <laughs> that was about the time you downed it. <laughs> and uh, I had a knee replacement in February. And there's there are only two steps into my house. Okay. It's a ranch. My laundry's yeah. on the first floor. Okay, it's working. It's perfect. Uh, but it was, that was still a challenge. Two steps. Mm -hmm. So, uh, but it was a, hot, a whole lot less of a challenge than if I had had 14 steps. Oh my God. To right. go to a bedroom. Yeah. So, right. just so uh, you know. 14 would have been uh, able. I'll would plead with anybody that has steps. And I, I, I keep hearing people say, oh, that's my cardiovascular exercise. Well, uh, that's fine as long as, <laughs> as long as your legs are working. As long as you have two knees. Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> two, knees. You have two knees. But, <laughs> um, you know, uh, get things in order. That's, that's the most important thing right. I can say, is get things in order. And, and when you're working with people, check them out. Make sure that they really care about you uh, in your transition, because, because not everybody is, is there to help you. They're, they're there. So a lot of people are there for themselves. Oh, my God. And, and, and for uh, the money. And for just the to money. make some quick yeah. money. And we, we have to cut this. I cut. want to give you phone, I want, um, phone numbers. Sure and where people can contact you, all mm -hmm. of you. You're licensed in Kentucky. I'm licensed in Kentucky. I'm with Huff Realty. Okay, what's your phone number? 859-240-7705. That's my cell phone number. Okay. So they can okay. We're, uh, we're the Cook team at Comey Shepherd. We're lo uh, licensed in Ohio, and you can contact us at 513 284 Six one one one. Well, folks, there you have it. Time's up. Wasn't this a great show? Take care of your business. Take care of your families. And most importantly, take care of yourself. Aging is going to happen if you're alive. You can't deny the facts. It's going to happen. But how you do it, now that's your choice. 
and hopefully the information that I, that's been given today will allow you to make good solid decisions about realtors about choices look for a realtor that is a senior real estate specialist who has put in the time and the resources to understanding aging and the process of, of real estate selling to that market powerful powerful information and as always you know how to reach me contact your local station just ask them for the money lady they know me <laughs> better know me <laughs> in closing out today's session my name's michelle graves and as always i wish you love peace and joy and god bless you see you next time mm -hmm.